What is it? It is... It is green. <sighs> Terrible. It has no bite. Hmm. What do you think? It's vile. God, man. Are you trying to go blind? Oh, oh my. That is quite toxic, isn't it? Oh, yes. I hate this. It is revolting. What? Please. And greetings everybody, and welcome to another Jester Reviews, where today I will be bringing you the Alliance Rex Pilot Escort, T6X2. Now, I have to admit, I've been looking forward to bringing you this ship, and this is the 14th um, anniversary, Star Trek Online anniversary ship, uh, which is one of the best ships that I've had for an anniversary event. Well, I had to say, I wondered whether this was going to be a Toy Story Rex, or whether it was going to be a Jurassic Park Rex. Well, metaphorically speaking, I think we've got a Jurassic Park Rex here on our hands. Now, I've done two runs with this ship. I've made a cannon scatter volley, a phaser cannon scatter volley, uh, with this ship, and I've done a polar on beam overlord build with this ship with ISOs and um, all the trimmings and I have to say I've been impressed with both of those builds so let's have a look at the stats for this ship shall we so um, as I said earlier the Alliance Rex pilot escort comes equipped with a console the Elite Alliance Squadron Beacon and upon activation the Alliance Fleet Beacon can call upon a squadron of reinforcements uh, that fly and fight alongside you. And they're armed with quad cannons and a mix of arrays and turrets and a pair of quantum torpedo launchers each. If your ship has access to the Jemadar Wingmates command, uh, then you can call vessels to respond to the wing commands. And the ships have the following abilities. So if you get the Klingon Bird of Prey, you get the Torpedo High Yield, and the attack pattern Omega 1, the Jemadar Fighter, Cannon Scatter Volley 1, Engineering Team 1. Uh, if you're a Federation player, you get the Cannon Scatter Volley 1 and the attack pattern Alpha 1. And the Romulan version, you get the Cannon Rapid Fire 1 and the attack pattern Beta. And this console also provides a passive boost to critical severity and flight speed. So there you go. Now it also comes uh, with an experimental weapon slot and it's equipped with an internal Polaron shunt. Um, the internal Polaron shunt gathers excess energy from the impulse engines and uses it to accelerate Polarons to extreme velocities, directing them towards an en uh, enemy ships. And this deals considerable Polaron damage but can happen a great deal more often if the ship is at higher speed. And I can actually... Uh, attest to that. So after achieving level 5 in this ship Starship Mastery you will unlock the Mastery Internal Supremacy Starship trait. Uh, while this trait is slotted during beams, fire at will, cannon scatter volley or torpedo spread, weapons fire applies a debuff to foes. Uh, damage resistance rating, the strength of the debuff depends on the current speed of your vessel. So the faster you go the bigger debuff and the better buff damage. So this ship comes with a hull modifier of 1.1 and a shield modifier of 1.2. It has five forward weapons and two aft weapons. It has three device slots and bridge officer stations are as follows. A commander tactical, a lieutenant tactical stroke miracle worker, a lieutenant commander engineering stroke pilot, uh, Ensign Science and Lieutenant Commander Universal. Uh, the consoles, you have five tactical, two engineering and four science. Um, base turn rate of 16, impulse modifier of 21 and an inertia rating of 60. You get a massive plus 15 weapons power and a plus 5 shields power and you can load dual cannons. 
The console is the Universal Elite Alliance Squadron Beacon and this ship comes with a cloak. It's not a battle cloak mind, but never mind. Uh, it also comes with Alliance Wingmates, Pilot Maneuvers, Experimental Weapon Slot equipped with the Inertial Puller on Shunt and Starship Mastery Package. Uh, yet precise weapon systems accuracy, tactical maneuvers, enhanced weapon systems, devastating weaponry, and inertial supremacy. That's the starship trait. So, uh, just looking at the practice weapon systems, you get plus accuracy, tactical maneuvers, you get plus defense, enhanced weapon systems, plus all def all damage, and devastating weaponry plus plus. <laughs> plus critical damage so here is uh, my build now I'm not going to go too heavily into this build and if there is anything that you want to know uh, about it just drop me a line below and um, yeah I'll let you know um, what I've put together so as you can see I've put in four uh, dual beam banks at the front which are polar on based uh, along with the morphogenic polaron energy torpedo which is part of three piece set um, and that comes with the morphogenic polaron energy weapon and the tactical morphogenic matrix controller so this set gives me let's have a quick look uh, so we're getting 17 point Eight weapon damage, 23.8% polar on damage, 35.6 starship drain expertise, minus 10% weapon power cost. So the two piece set is 15% recharge time reduction to fire at will, beam overloads, uh, scatter volley, rapid fire, torpedo spread, torpedo high yield, uh, mine pattern alpha, and mine pattern beta. Um, Set 3, whenever you activate one of the following abilities you gain a unique buff that lasts for 45 seconds and can stack up to 3 times. So fire at will or beam overload you get a plus 2% critical chance, maximum 6%. Uh, a scatter volley, rapid fire, you get a plus 10% critical severity, maximum 30%. Oh, quite like the look of that. I think we'll do more cannon scatter volleying. Uh, torpedo spread, torpedo high yield, mine pattern alpha and mine pattern beta, 7.5% weapon damage, maximum 22.5%. So um, that's that set. So I've also equipped this with uh, four advanced engineering isomatic plasma distribution manifolds, and that wasn't easy to say. Uh, <laughs> that's a right mouthful wasn't it and that's given me a 39.4% polar on damage uh, a plus 7.3 weapon power and a plus 7.3 stacking maximum weapon power now I've also uh, stuck on here two tactical energetic protomatter matrix infusers I did have three on here but um, I've dropped it to two so I can fit other polar on uh, consoles uh, again it's still a work in progress but um, yes I'm still I'm still uh, experimenting with this uh, so these uh, tactical energetic protomatter matrix infusers I get a plus 37.5 polar on damage and a plus 6.2 percent projectile weapon damage now it's interesting I'm, I was toying with putting five of these on I only have three to be honest with you um, but yes, I may stretch to five down here at some point in time and um, yeah, see how they perform. So each one of these gives me a 4,658.8 hull healing, 5% uh, of maximum hull every two seconds for 10 seconds and a plus 1,000 shield regeneration every two seconds for 10 seconds. So um, yeah, I quite, yeah, I quite like the sound of having uh, five of them on the bottom there, but uh, anyhow. Um, moving on to the console itself which is the Universal Al uh, Elite Alliance Squadron Beacon so uh, here as I mentioned earlier on you can call upon uh, the Federation Escort 
Romulan Warbird, Klingon Bird of Prey or the Gemini Fighter for 45 seconds and it has a 2 minutes recharge time. Uh, now as I say it's a little bit bugged because um, when I'm in game I've had the Federation Escort appear and I've also had the Klingons appear. Yes, so uh, until they get that fixed, um, hmm, yes, it's a bit of a pick and mix, I'm afraid. Um, but I, I, I actually do like the um, Alliance Rex pilot escorts. To be honest with you, I think I think they're really cool. So moving on to the experimental weapons, we have the inertial Polaron shunt, and this gives Polaron damage which increases uh, the faster you go basically it has a 250 targeting arc and it gives you 11,978.3 polar on damage 81.34% haste to this weapon increases with flight speed up to 200% at 180 you also get a plus 30 critical severity and during ambush after cloak to target minus 10 all damage resistance for 15 seconds plus 4 critical chance 4 second recharge I quite like this um, weapon and yes I've had some friends who've told me that they've had some serious DPS results with this yes personally I'm not into uh, DPS but if that's your, that's your bag then yeah you can achieve some serious numbers with this I've been told um, I'm not personally into DPS builds as such um, I, I just play the game for the effects and uh, the enjoyment of the game so uh, but the effects of this uh, are quite cool I quite like the effects of this uh, the, iner the inertial puller on shunt okay let's have a look at um, some vanity shields shall we um, so if you get bored of this particular design um, let's see what we can do with it because there's not much you can actually do um, in the ship's tailor um, there is something about the bridges I would like to uh, bring to your attention because it's new and I've only just spotted it but uh, we'll talk about that just in a little while uh, so let's have a look at some of the vanity shield shall we so this is the counter command vanity shield and this is the Delta Alliance Vanity Shield. And this is the Discovery and Vanity Shield. I can't say I'm f I'm a fan of this one, to be honest with you. This is the Fakiri Vanity Shield. Yes, looks like it's uh, rusting, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not fond of that one either. This is the Amiga Force Vanity Shield. And here we have the Terran Task Force Vanity Shield. Can't say I'm fond of that one, to be honest with you. The Temporal Defense Initiative Vanity Shield. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't do anything for me, to be honest with you, but uh, yeah. And this is the Ball vanity shield looks quite menacing doesn't it the ball one um, I'm not so sure about I mean I do like the ball vanity shield but um, the ball vanity shield rather but I'm not sure it actually suits this ship and this is the gamma vanity shield hmm if you're fond of is it purple? Pink? Purple? Well, that colour. If you're fond of that, then that's your bag. Hmm. Not quite sure about that one either. And this is the Section 31 Vanity Shield. This is the Romulan Advanced Covariant Shield. Hmm. Yes, that, that doesn't do anything for me either, to be honest with you. 
the Platinum Vanity Shield. Looks very Tronish, doesn't it? Yes. This is the adapted Mako Vanity Shield. Hmm, can't say I'm keen on that one either. This is the Dyson Vanity Shield. Yes, call me Mr. Fussy, but I don't seem to be uh, excited by that one either, to be honest with you. And finally, we have the Assimilated Vanity Shield. So here we are at the ship's tailor. Now you may wonder what we are doing here when there is literally no materials and there's no templates other than what you get. But here's one thing that I have noticed just recently and this is the interiors. So these are all the interiors which I've somewhat purchased and some which I own with other ships and as you can see they are all unlocked and I've never I haven't noticed that before so I'm not sure when that came into being um, but one of my biggest um, issues with these new ships is we were always stuck with the basic bridge so as you can see here we've got Andorian the Crossfield Bridge Terran Crossfield, Strategic, Victory, Defiant, Vivid, the Warship Bridge, um, the Belfast, you can even access the Alachi Bridge. Yeah, I, think, I, think, I think we'd have to be a bit of a TARDIS, wouldn't we, considering how big the Alachi Bridge is, putting that on this ship. Uh, yes, that would be a bit ridiculous, wouldn't it? Um, Unity, again, that one's quite a big bridge. Nomad. The Decora Bridge, even. Freighter Bridge. Classic. So, there you go. Um, if, like me, you've, you've been super critical of not being able to uh, put a decent bridge on a decent ship when, when we get one of these free ships then you'll be pleased to know that now these are all unlocked so if you purchase these bridges as well these are all unlocked Delta that's quite a cool bridge isn't it uh, Wanderer Explorer some of these I've, I've forgotten I, uh, I actually own so I'll be I'll be having quite a lot of fun with these, moving them around and having a look. Um, yeah, Kelvin Vengeance, Miranda, Odyssey, Aquarius, Compassion. Oh, so there we go. We've got we've got quite a few to be going out there, haven't we? Um, so all the ships that you have. On this particular character I believe I haven't tried other characters yet I'll have to have a look at that uh, but if, if you buy ships from the Zen store then uh, yes you should have access to them now whether um, the premium ships which are on this character will be on the other characters I don't know whether the bridges for the premium ships will be on other characters I'm not sure but um, I'll certainly have a look into that I'll, these Klingon bridges look excellent isn't it So we've got you've got a fair old bit to be going at here um, if you get tired of the same old bridge and as I said I in the past I have been very critical um, of Star Trek Online not providing bridges because yeah that that's the one we normally get and I absolutely loathe that bridge I, I really do it's it's horrible um, don't like it at all Erosion, Herc Bridge. I'll be bringing you that ship shortly. Um, I'm not sure it's going to be a popular one for you guys because it's not really a popular ship. But uh, yeah, I will be bringing you that shortly. Um, 
Yeah, for some reason it hasn't unlocked the Kabbalah bridge. Not quite sure about why it hasn't done that. Yeah, the Krenum bridge, and I'll be bringing you that ship soon. I picked that one up. Bukhari. So, I think, going through all of that, I think you've got a rough idea, really, of um, what you can do with this uh, with this ship. I personally like... Ooh, let's have a look for this one. Uh, it's got a bit of a polar on look to it, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that's why I picked it before. So we'll, we will go with that one. Yes, so there you go. Uh, you may not be able to choose any material or template for this ship, but you certainly can unlock some bridges and you can put some vanity shields on it uh, to spruce things up a little bit for you. Right, without further ado, let's take this ship into battle and see how she performs, shall we? So here we are, the Beta Therador system.
Well, there you go. I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed that run. And uh, yes, I did uh, the uh, Jipuri challenge with this ship. I've done quite a few runs and the best time that I could pull on this ship was 2 minutes 13. So let's see where we stand, shall we, uh, in the grand scheme of things with the Japuri Challenge. So here are the results from um, my earlier Japuri run on uh, Advanced. And as you can see there, in 21st place, the Alliance Rex Pilot Escort um, on a T6X2 polar on uh, beam overload build with the ISOs. I was slightly disappointed in that result to be honest with you. I thought we'd have been a little bit higher up uh, the chart but maybe we will fare better if I put phasers on this ship but um, anyway we will see. But even so she's in good company uh, the Praetor Command Warbird Battlecruiser in 22nd place she's pushed down the uh, command heavy battle cruiser, the section 31 command heavy battle cruiser that is, and also she's above the 25th place Vadwa Miracle Worker Juggernaut. Unfortunately, back in 31st place, we have the Terran Eagle Pilot Raider, which has dropped uh, on a torpedo build to uh, on oh, 3 minutes 33.94, so it's in uh, 31st place. That might improve. Uh, once I put some ISOs on that and um, yeah, give it some beams and we'll see where we go with that. Um, but if you're wanting to know, uh, again, there's not much difference at the top of the tree. Let's have a quick look. So yes, if uh, you'd like to time yourself on your own Japori challenge on Advanced, by all means, drop me a line below with your results. I'd be eager to know um, how well you do. Now, yes, I have contemplated... Um, doing an elite list but um, yes it's taken me a while to uh, get this together on advanced and uh, I keep promising myself I am going to add to it and uh, yes now I've got a little bit of spare time on my hands I will try and add to this list and in fact improve, up, improve upon some of these times so there you go I shall keep adding to it and keep letting you know how things are going and you can get a fair idea of how these ships are all placed uh, in the grand scheme of things as as near as damn it anyway well I hope you found that useful and um, yeah don't forget if you fancy doing your own Japori challenge uh, on advanced yeah as I said drop me a line let me know what your times are as soon as you hit the OK um, yeah good luck so is she a Toy Story Rex in your view or is she Jurassic Park Rex? Yes, yes, well, thank you for that. Well, I'll leave that up to you, but for me, I think she's a Jurassic Park Rex. Now, don't forget, if you've enjoyed this review, uh, please hit that subscribe button for me. Uh, and, uh, yeah, give us a like as well. That always makes my day. And uh, speaking of days... I'll leave you to the rest of yours. So until next time, this is Jester signing off. If it is jokes you desire, I could summon the court jester. <laughs> I protest, I am not a merry man! <laughs> you My god, Picard, the place is a bloody death trap! Lightning bolts falling from the ceiling! <laughs> Please, Spock, do me a favor, and don't say it's fascinating. No. But it is... interesting. <laughs> Dana? That was not funny. Hold the jester. <laughs>